But the IPCC is designed for the era when our resources were printed books. It's designed for the era when you published a volume on paper with ink. And when you wanted to reference it, you put it down on your desk and you opened it to page 982. We live in a very different era today. The first IPCC report was published in 1990. And today, almost nobody uses printed books. I haven't bought a printed copy of IPCC, I think, since 95. I, I don't know about you, but I use a nook to do most of my reading. Unfortunately, the IPCC has not kept up with that. It is still being published as if it were 1990. And what's the cost of that? The cost of that is you're starting from scratch every time. Talk about inefficient. Do you know how many scientists, how many meetings, how much carbon dioxide is burned going to those meetings it takes to write an IPCC report? The numbers are boggling. And the vast majority of people are donating their time for free because they understand the importance of the assessment process. So I want to be very clear. I am not at all criticizing the importance of this process. It is vitally important. And because it is so important, I think it should be done in the smartest and most strategic way possible. The smartest and most strategic way today in 2017 is very different than it was in 1990. It's to have a continuing or sustained assessment process where instead of starting from a blank page every single time, instead you have a living document that is updated on a regularly scheduled time frame. Now, you can't update the document every time a new paper is published. You don't want to do that either. The document should represent the balance of the evidence. And so when one aspect of our understanding starts to change, looking at you know, methane emissions from natural gas, for example, you don't want to update the IPCC as soon as the first paper comes out. Every year, you could have a committee that could meet every year, and it could say, all right, what should we work on this year? What topics have a critical mass of evidence that has been amassed in the last few years to the point where we, it, we could really significantly update this section? And so every year, they could schedule one or more sections for an update based on their expert opinion of the state of the science. But other areas where the science really hasn't advanced much, you wouldn't have to update them for three, five, possibly even 10 years. You might just have to update the figure, global temperature change. You don't have to change what the figure looks like, you just add a new data point to it. I don't think sustained assessment would actually be that hard, but the problem is, is as a community, we're very conservative. Most people don't recognize that, but we are very conservative. And what do conservative people hate most? They hate change. So it is really difficult to talk about changing the IPCC process without people taking it very personally because people have invested their lives in this process. And many, again, as I've said, many of them have done it free of cost, sometimes even at the, at the expense of their own careers. So in no way do I want to minimize the level of effort that has been put into this. But I think that since time is our most valuable resource, we should all of us be managing our time as wisely as we can and producing a giant volume, which is numbering now in the thousands of pages, every five to 10 years from scratch is no longer the best use of our time in the internet era.